Welcome back 164 scale diecast collectors. Today we're looking at some new Jeeps and pickup trucks released from Auto World and M2. Check out these awesome trucks. Square body 1979 Chevrolet trucks. I've gone from wild to mild with a custom here. This is the original custom look with those low profile tires, huge chrome rims, slam suspension, but I much prefer this look of a kind of raised or stock truck, slightly mildly raised perhaps. And I am going to tell you how I made this beauty. We're gonna get all these vehicles out for a loose review on the table. A quick look at the packaging first before we open these up, the remaining vehicles I have that is. Awesome packaging for the Sport Utility Series. One of six vehicles by Auto World. Uh, one of 7,516 of these blue Jeeps and the black ones. Some more information about the premium facts. You can pause on that if you want to read about that. This one's in chief blue. And of course, there's the back of the card with the other vehicles available in the series. I only have versions A and B of two of the six vehicles in the series. That being, of course, the Jeep Rubicon and the Chevy C10s, both in Scottsdale and Bonanza paint liveries. This is a very cool vehicle. Available only in Canada was the Olympic 1976 Chevy Scottsdale to commemorate the Montreal Olympics held the same year. Uh, the 1976 GMC Sierra Grand also had Olympic editions, were only uh, 630 units produced. This is a Chevy version. So I'm not sure how many of those were produced, but quite a rare truck to be sure. Some very cool packaging. Um, again, there's the other vehicles. Same series. And now for our American friends, this is to commemorate the U.S. Bicentennial. GM offered the Spirit of 76 edition of the 1976 Chevy Bonanza pickup truck. Incredibly rare. Only 500 of these special edition trucks were produced. And it is in skyline blue with the actual livery on the sides. Um, awesome truck. So we're going to get that 76 open up as well. And from M2, I've already gone ahead to open this Dodge A100, which is really cool. We're going to look at that as part of my loose uh, portion of this video. Here's the package, Dodge A100. Pretty straightforward M2 packaging. As for the 1979 Chevrolet truck, again, not much there. These are Maisho exclusives. Let's get into a loose review now. Wow! And now for a review on my wild to mild truck, if you will. The wildly lowered awesome custom truck that M2 gives us here is by far the nicest square body truck they've released to date. And uh, although all their square body trucks have this lowered stance and chassis with the big fat tires on the back and the smaller tires up front, the only way to make this truck honestly look any cooler was to give it a 4x4 look. Mild lift. And uh, it rolls really nice. I'm going to tell you right now how I did that. This is about a one hour project. It doesn't take very long. All you need to have is a 1950s Chevrolet Apache donor truck from M2. This was uh, produced, well, many different paint jobs over the years. So they're pretty easy to pick up still on eBay. I'm not sure if there's any currently being produced as far as the, the different waves of vehicles from M2. But you should be able to find one easily enough. Reduce it to a pile of scrap rubble and save when you open up your truck from your display box Save the two screws that hold it down You're gonna want those because you're gonna need the longer screws to attach the Apache chassis to the Pre-drilled uh, screw holes that this truck already has in the body mount or the, the, For the cab in the box Anyways, it doesn't take much to figure it out a small screwdriver Phillips head star head Get that screw out, get the chassis off. Uh, and the next thing you're going to need to do, of course, is then you're just going to have to do a little bit of work with the Dremel. So a little Dremeling of the back to remove the bumper and just a few nibs along the sides and uh, some slight nibs at the front, I think. After that, I just uh, gave it a splash of black spray can spray paint on the chassis spots that I kind of scarred from Dremeling. And uh, after that, this truck pretty much was perfect oh and i drilled one extra hole for that to line up it's not a necessary screw as you can see um it would attach from these two just fine but this one just gives a little bit of extra rigidity as a display model you wouldn't need it but i like to have these trucks 
able to be rolled around for some play if need be. And as you can see, those wheels look really nice on that truck. I've decided to stick with the white ones. And uh, it was actually kind of a tough decision whether to go even more overboard and put some big chrome mudder tires on here and make it look really custom. But I wanted to just kind of show what this truck would look like with a stock ride height, uh, similar to what Auto World does with their square body trucks and their stock ride height. Keep in mind, this is more of a 4x4 ride height, much like the Apache pickup truck it came from, which was also a 4x4. So basically a Chevy, 1950s Chevy chassis, 4x4. Uh, replacing the 1970s two-wheel drive uh, chassis on this truck. Let me know in the comments what you guys think about this uh, custom and if you'd like to see some more customs. I do have lots of uh, customs in mind, specifically with M2, just because they're so easy and fun to work on, with the interchangeable parts and whatnot. Um, so let me know if you'd like to see more of that. Moving on to the other vehicles in this review, this Dodge A100 van is also a very new piece. And it looks fantastic, as you can see. That is not one I could let go of. I really had to add that to my van collection, even though I have a lot of these A100s already. I think you can see why I really need to add that one to the collection. So now let's look at these Auto World Jeeps, since I already have those out of the package. Um, black and blue, here you go. Really nice rolling vehicles. You can just hear the sound of the rolling on these things. They roll straight and true. Um, very heavy. Awesome details on these. I mean, check out the tires and the wheels. Look just like the real thing. And uh, no opening parts on this, although the hood is a separate piece. So really nice. I'm going to have to put those next to a green light Jeep. Uh, I should have had one ready for this video. But through the power of magic, I do now. Ta-da! Two green light Jeeps to compare with against the Auto World. So here, let's go Wrangler JK to Wrangler JK. They look really nice next to each other. The scale is spot on for green light and Auto World all the way around. Vehicle dimensions are nearly identical so far as I can tell. Difference in uh, tire widths, of course. That's the one thing you're going to notice on the Auto World, the Jeep will actually have uh, more authentic stock width wheels, whereas the green light has uh, slightly wider wheels, more of a custom look, which is perfectly fine. Now, the green light version also has a removable roof piece and a roll bar inside, and a separate one piece cast hood as well, as just like the Auto World. So, that's the only place where I see that the Auto World. Uh, doesn't have that same feature, but of course the uh, the details on the auto world are just ever so slightly more refined uh, a little bit more polished uh, Than green light which is the case with pretty much all of their models across the board auto world is definitely the leader in uh, consistency with their accuracy in their models and uh, Making sure they get all of the paint lined up perfectly the window flashings removed Anything left over that uh, you might sometimes find on a green light model, such as tires that don't quite roll perfectly or are misaligned, very unlikely to have these problems with Auto World. Uh, then again, they are more expensive as well, so that's uh, that's part and parcel. Here's a two door version. These are just older models I had from my green light display, but to show them side by side with the other Auto World vehicles, or anyone that was interested in that. Hope that helps you out if you're considering adding those to your collection or concerned about how they mix with your, your green lights or vice versa. So let's look at these uh, Bicentennial Year and Bonanza trucks next. Let's get those open up for you. Absolutely beautiful trucks, just as I had anticipated. Check these out. So opening hood on both models, of course. And a drop down tailgate. Very, very nice. Check out how shiny that paint is, how crisp and clean the line is where it meets the, the hood meets the uh, lower part of the windshield. Whatever that's called. I forget. There's a name for it. Doesn't matter. License plate. Olympic, it says right on it. And some nice, original, authentic, kind of deep dish uh, hubcaps there. White painted centers with a black uh, center cap. 
just amazing details all the way around. Check out the uh, the weather stripping around the windows, the black weather stripping even. Super cool. And now for the U.S. version. Again, an opening hood. Nice big orange engine lurking under the hood. Bicentennial on the license plate for this one. Same wheels. Nearly the same wheels, I think. Larger center cap with the bow tie on them for the hubcaps. Super cool. So really nice collection of trucks to add to my square body truck collection. Which is, as you can see, ever growing. Video by video, more and more trucks making their way into the fold. Into the diorama display, what have you. Hope you enjoyed this video. Again, let me know what you thought of the uh, custom aspect of this video. If you'd like to see more of that introduced. Uh, looking for your suggestions, of course, for all my videos. It's nice to get your input. Thanks for all sticking around. Stay safe, be healthy. And of course, if you're shopping for anything um, online or if there is anything available in your stores, happy hunting.